What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to make a video today to show you how to put together a basic 12 volt solar system if you're looking to have a little bit of off-grid storage, something for uh, emergency relief or just if the power goes out briefly, something to keep your appliances going, lights, small stuff. Um, a little 12 volt system can really come in handy if you are somewhere that loses power quite often. So a lot of this stuff might be uh, a little below your skill level for the average viewer of my channel, but I do get questions in the comments all the time saying, can you show me how to hook this stuff up? I don't understand how to do this. So I thought I'd do one for you today. So these are your basic components. I have a thousand watt inverter. This is on the smaller side, but it will run small stuff like a fridge, my mini split. Um, it can run, you know, average household appliances. It's not going to run an air fryer, a microwave, anything real heavy. Now we have a fuse. You always want to have a fuse that is appropriate for your gauge of wiring. I'll leave a link below to some charts to show you how to size your fuses, how to size your conductors um, for the amperage and the loads you want to run. Now we have a Victron charge controller here. Victron is a very high quality company. If you are somebody who uh, appreciates a high quality product, Victron is definitely a good one. They are on the pricier side, but you get what you pay for. And then you have your lithium iron phosphate battery. Most people getting into solar are looking at this as an option. LifePo4 is a very common word you're going to see a lot. This is where you're going to spend a good majority of your budget and uh, it pays to get a good battery. Now there's really never been a better time to get a good budget lithium iron phosphate battery these prices have come way down this is a vat rur. it goes for 350 dollars and it includes low temp protection and self-heating which is a pretty important feature if you're like myself up here in canada you don't want to get these batteries cold you cannot charge them below zero degrees so something like that is worth paying the extra 50 to 75 dollars for most companies have this as an option this one also has a bluetooth app that has a shunt built in now a shunt is something like this right here this measures current in and out of the battery tells you exactly Exactly how much power you have left in your system. Uh, this is a Victron. Again, it's on the pricier side. This is an Amazon version. I think this is called the a Lee or something like that. I've used this for a number of years. It actually does work good. The Victron has a Bluetooth app. It's a little bit fancier and it has a higher current rating, but you can get away with either one. Over here, we have a couple cables that will make your life easier. This we are going to use to tie the fuse into the circuit. These are called XT90 connectors. You can use these in a number of different ways just to make your life easier. You can have one uh, for your solar panel. You can wire one of these up to your solar connectors. These are called MC4s. These are a very common solar panel connector. Most commercial grade solar panels will use this style of connector. So uh, just a couple cables to be familiar with. You can do it with just standard wiring, but sometimes these do make life easier and they're worth having around. Okay, so to start off, we're going to connect the inverter to the battery. I've got the fuse in the positive side, and before I connect the negative to the negative side of the battery, I've got a little resistor installed here just to take away that spark, because when you connect the negative to the negative, there's going to be a large inrush of current to charge up the capacitors in the inverter. It'll cause a pretty big spark. It can damage your terminals, and it could get you in the eye. So you should always wear eye protection. This resistor should take away the spark. You'll see we have no spark and we can go ahead and connect the negative. Okay, so our inverter is connected. I have opened up the batteries app. This is the built-in shunt I was talking about. It shows it sitting at 100%, 100.9 amp hours remaining. If we scroll down, we can actually see the internal temperatures on every cell, which is very nice to know. We can come over here, turn on the inverter. I'm gonna take my phone and put it on my landing pad wireless charger from sticktothewoods.com. I'll have links to these below. And if we come over here to the shunt, we should be able to see some action. So we are currently discharging at a rate of 1.1 amp, 13.3 volts for a total of 14.6, between 14.6 and 13.3 watts. So if you just need a little bit of power from the battery, you can pretty much call it quits right there. But if you want to have this thing recharge itself every day while the sun is out, this is where the charge controller comes in. So I've got these connections made. These are going to go to the PV. That's our solar input. This is going to go to our solar panel. This is going to go to the battery. And then we have a little load connection right here if you want to run some small 12 volt loads. So we're going to go ahead and connect this to the battery and then we will take it outside and put a little sun on the panel. 
So now that we have our leads connected for the solar charge controller, the MPPT, it's as simple as taking this outside, hooking up the pre-made XT90 connector to the solar panel and just letting it charge. Now, if you do have a Victron or something a little higher end, you may have a wireless app. I can connect to this via Bluetooth, take a look at the day's charging profile, see how much power we've made on previous days and really keep track of how much power comes into the system. Okay, we've got the battery and the charge controller out here in the yard ready to start charging. I've got a big old bifacial panel from Sirius PV and the XT90 connector hooked up to that. This is a pretty big panel for a small MPPT like this, so you always want to check the rating plate and just make sure nothing exceeds the limits. In this case, we are good to go, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Our battery is now charging, so we're going to leave it out here in the yard for a couple hours, let it get topped up, and then we'll take it inside and do a bit of a capacity test. I'll pop the app up on screen, and you can see we are maxing out the MPPT. It's pushing a full 20 amps into the battery at 278 watts, so that is all this charge controller can handle, but it is within the limits. It's not going to hurt it to do that. Uh, it may run a little bit hotter than normal, but it should be fine. Okay, so our battery is fully topped off. I've got it back in the shop here and I have the Victron shunt hooked up. We are going to run a capacity test on this battery. Anytime you buy a battery, you wanna make sure you get what you paid for. So we are gonna verify we get a full 100 amp hours pulled from this battery. This shunt will tell us exactly how much power we produce over this test. So I'm gonna plug in some lighting and other loads in the garage, let it run for a couple hours and we'll keep an eye on it. So we're pulling right around 300 watts. That gives us an estimated runtime of about four hours. I am gonna come out here periodically and put the heat gun on just for some extra load and we'll see how it does. All right, test is going well. I've got the heat gun running now. I'm gonna put a pretty heavy load on this thing for the last 20%. You can see we're pulling over a thousand watts right around the 100 amp hour mark, which is the rated maximum current discharge for this battery. So it'll be a good test. We'll keep an eye on it. All right, we're coming down to the last couple amp hours on the battery sitting at 2%. I like to shut the heat gun off when we get this low because if the voltage dips too low, the test will stop prematurely. The inverter shuts off at 10.8 volts. So for the last little bit, we're just gonna pull 300 watts. I've got the thermal camera here from Hike Micro. Just taking a look at the temperatures. Everything's doing well. The uh, positive conductor is a little bit warm, but it's been pulling you know, 100 amps for the last 15, 20 minutes almost. So that's normal to see a bit of heat in there. Everything is uh, within what it's rated for. So no problems here. Battery is coming up on fully discharged now. We're getting close to that 10.8 volt cutoff. So uh, we've pulled 101.2 amp hours, meaning we got our full rated capacity from the VATRU battery. This would be considered a pass. Well, I hope if any of you guys had questions about 12 volt solar systems, this may have answered a couple of them for you. They are very simple to put together and that's one reason they are so popular. You do have to be careful with this stuff. This was my first setup just two years ago and now I have a 6000 XP powering half my house. So it does snowball, kind of gets away from you. You get a little bit addicted, but I'll put the links to all this stuff below as well as any discount codes I'm able to pass your way. The VATRU battery seems like a pretty good value for the money. It's got some nice features. We did pull a full 100 amp hours from it. So like I said, all that will be linked below. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.